Some years ago, actually many years ago, my wife and I were missionaries in Zambia, Central Africa. Things went well for the first couple of years, but the last two years we lived there in the city of Livingston, there had been a change in the country so that food was very scarce. And amongst all the other problems we face with poisonous snakes and uh, fear of theft and so on, the fact that we had to go out every single day and shop for food became very difficult. Trying to find something, finding it every day. Meat was going up in price and becoming extremely rare. So it was an, a daily struggle. One afternoon, I looked out through the window of our home and saw a lady get out of a car, come into our yard and walk up to our door. She was carrying a basket and of course, I wondered what was in it and who she was. She was a total stranger to me. We invited her in and uh, she told us that she had heard of our name and of our uh, situation that we were living in this city. She and her husband lived outside the city. They were farmers. They had various fields of crops, but primarily they were chicken farmers. They, they raised chickens and sold the meat throughout the country. They were also Christians, though of a, another denomination. And having heard of us, she decided to make our acquaintance, came to see us, and brought a basket full of food, including chicken. Well, from that meeting, it went on that we developed a friendship with her and her husband, and they supplied us with meat for two years, freely, generously, and we could count on it. It took some of the stress off us. It was their ministry, as they explained it, they felt that God wanted them to share with us in our need. At the end of our time there, they drove us to the airport and we came back to Canada. For a few years, we kept contact and then as things go, we lost contact for over 40 years. Very recently, we had an email from Africa. She's still alive, her husband had passed away, her children were grown up, but they traced us down here in Nova Scotia sent an email and we had the joy of reconnecting on our wonderful media ability today. It was nice to touch base with her again and to um, remember those days when we were good friends and met so often and to once again thank her for her generosity, for her kindness in ministering to us in our need. She did what she could. It didn't seem much to her, it was a lot for us. So what I want to share with you today is do what you can in your service for God. You see, sometimes we have misconceptions and we think that in order to minister for God, to do something for God, it's going to of necessity be something big, somewhat grandiose, that we need to pray and seek God to find some particular situation or position, some ministry that will stand out as definitely a ministry from God. It will have something spiritual about it. It will give us a warm and fuzzy feeling when we've accomplished it. Others will notice and say, wow, that's amazing what God's doing with you. Look what a, the big impact you're having. The effect is amazing and far beyond anything you ever thought of. In that light, what this lady did for us looked small, common, plain. Really, what, what is in that that you could call ministry? Well, let me go to the New Testament, the book of Philippians. Paul the Apostle in chapter 4 writes back to this congregation in Philippi. And he makes a statement to them. He says, I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that... At last, now at last, this, this particular time, he says, you revived your concern for me. In fact, you had it before, but you didn't have opportunity. He then goes on to explain in that chapter how that this particular church had repeatedly served him by sending gifts to him to help him in his ministry. And as he thanks them, he takes it as a ministry unto the Lord. 
that was acceptable to the Lord. In fact, he says, this was a sweet or a fragrant aroma. It's an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And he said, you did this repeatedly. You helped me out more than once by sending me a gift so that I could survive, I could make it as I served God. Ministry to the Lord is not the grand, big, startling, I think that everybody sees and notices. It's so very often the very simple, humble, common level of just helping somebody. Actually, that's what the word ministry means, to minister to, to serve somebody. And it can take many forms. This lady and her husband gave us one or two chickens a week. That was a lot for us. It was the only meat we got for a couple of years. To them, it was just part of their operation on this farm with thousands and thousands of chickens that were actually killed each day and packaged off. Yet to us, it was basic food. I served as a missionary. I was in church work. What are they doing? They're doing something just as important. They're part of the ministry. Jesus said that if you give even a cup of cold water to someone who is serving him, you also are serving and you receive an equal reward. Doing what you can is not looking for something big, something that everybody notices, something that makes a mark and changes history. It's looking across the yard at your neighbor and saying hello when nobody else gives them the time of day. It's a simple thing of smiling at the grocery store, at the clerk, who's been working seven, eight hours in the heat, sweltering behind a mask, trying to get through the day in the midst of a pandemic. It's looking at your children and hugging them. It's going to church on Sunday morning and smiling at others, and it may involve helping somebody who's got a need, whether it's with food or a little cash gift or just helping them to get out of a car and opening the door for them or to go up steps. It might be something that nobody would even think of or notice as significant. But when it's done from a heart of love, when it's done out of concern, when it's done in the name of Jesus, when your life glorifies God, it's like the church at Philippi that more than once, repeatedly, served Paul by sending a gift. It's like the lady bringing us a basket with a chicken in it. I don't know what it is that you can do, and maybe you haven't looked to find it yet, but I guarantee you it's not something hidden and secret and difficult. If you're going to do something for God, if you're looking for your ministry in God, look and listen to the needs that are around you. Minister to those needs. Offer of yourself, and it will differ from time to time. Sometimes it involves helping or smiling or speaking and chatting, maybe praying with them or giving a hug or helping them in some practical task. It may not look like very much, but to God, it's important. And Paul finishes his instructions to this church in his letter of appreciation by saying that my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Notice it's not a deal that God says, you do something for me and I'll do something for you. You do something big for me and you'll get something big back. God simply says, I notice what you did. It's pleasing to me, and I'm going to take care of your needs too, even as you're taking care of someone else's needs. That's really what it's all about. That easy, that simple, that common, but that special and that spiritual. So go and do it, because in so doing, you are showing love to God, the first commandment and greatest, and you're fulfilling the second great commandment, love your neighbor. And you're doing it in a very practical way. God bless. Have a good day. And make somebody else's day really good.